Hi folks, today's lecture is on muscles that move the humerus and in today's lecture we're going to cover the deltoid, the pectoralis major, a very large muscle known as latissimus dorsi, and its little buddy teres major. And then we're also going to cover the muscles of the rotator cuff. That includes the teres minor, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and subscapularis. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first muscle we're going to talk about is the deltoid. And here we go. Let me grab my little pen somewhere. Where is my pen? There it is. I found it. Um, okay, so let's check out the uh, attachment points of this muscle. We've got an attachment point here to the acromial end of the clavicle. We've got an attachment point here, which is actually the acromion and then an attachment point over here which is the spine of the scapula. Then you can come all the way down to the bottom of the muscle and see it's attaching down here. And here's a front view of the same thing. So my question is, we're moving the humerus. Which one's the origin? Which one's the insertion? Um, well, since we're moving the humerus, that's got to be the insertion way down here. And the origin points are going to be up here. And so now I'm going to ask what is going to happen when we use this muscle? Well, let me go ahead and divide it. I'm going to kind of divide it into three little sections here. There's a part called the anterior deltoid and you can see that's facing anteriorly. That would also be right about here. I'm trying to divide that correctly. So anterior deltoid. Then we have the lateral deltoid which is on the lateral side of the arm, that would be down here. And then we've got the posterior deltoid. Let me see, I'm going to divide it kind of like that. Now we can't see the posterior deltoid down here because this is an anterior view. So you'll notice it says up here the action will depend on the active part. The anterior deltoid, the lateral deltoid, sometimes people call it the middle, and the posterior deltoid are each going to have a different action. So my question is, what are the actions? Well, sometimes it helps to make a um, like a word bank of choices. And so I'm going to do that over here. We're going to just make it um, an options menu. OK, and I don't I'm not sure if I can type on this. So I might have to write it out and I'm going to abbreviate pretty heavily. So bear with me. Options. What can we do with the humerus at the glenohumeral joint? Well, we can do flexion, which is going to look like this. The arm comes straight out to the front. And then the opposite, of course, is going to be extension or even hyperextension towards the back. We got those. Uh, we can do abduction out to the side. And then, of course, adduction. Ab. Whoa. Crazy with this pen. And add. Oh, my goodness. How neat. And then finally, it might be kind of difficult for me to show you, um, the humerus, we can medially rotate it when the humerus comes towards the midline or away from the midline, medial and lateral rotation. So I'm going to do, oh, so neat, MR, medial rotation, lateral rotation. So keep these options open. Every single muscle we're going to talk about today does one or more of these. So what do you think? The anterior deltoid, since it's on the front, this part right here, we're going to try to move this I to this O. We're going to move this insertion to this origin. And so the anterior deltoid is going to do flexion. The middle deltoid, or the lateral portion right here, which is right over here, is going to do abduction. And then maybe you can guess the posterior portion towards the back from from this deltoid tuberosity, which I think I failed to mention earlier, deltoid tuberosity, um, pulls towards the spine, we get extension. So we've got flexion on the anterior deltoid, abduction on this lateral part here, and then towards the posterior, way in the back, extension. Okay, or really hyperextension. 
Okay, there's the deltoid. Next. All right, here we got the pectoralis major. And remember what I told you earlier, <clears throat> if there's a pectoralis major, that means there's a pectoralis minor, and so that's going to be underneath. We'll see that. Um, depends on if you've already watched the scapula movers video. We saw it in the scapula movers video, if you've watched that or if you haven't. It'll be coming up. So again, let's point out where this muscle is attached. Um, we've got an attachment here on the clavicle. It's about the medial two-thirds. Attachment all down the body of the sternum. And then big attachment to these costal cartilages right here of the rib cage. And then all the way over here. It's not the deltoid tuberosity. It's not quite the greater tubercle. It's, you know, the bottom end of the interdubricular groove, which we can see right in here. Okay, so this one's a little bit higher up. You'll notice the difference. It's in the vicinity of that interdubricular groove. Okay, so right there on the humerus. And again, since we are moving the humerus, that's going to be our insertion. So then we're going to have origin all along here. And what are we going to get when we move I to O? Well, I'm going to change my color and show you where the deltoid would be. All right, so if I was going to put in the deltoid, I'm going to use this like bluish color. It's going to come down like this, attached to the deltoid tuberosity. And then it's going to come way up here like this. Really, it's attaching here. I kind of accentuated it. But this is the deltoid. And so right here in this vicinity is the anterior deltoid. And so this area of the pectoralis major is going to help the anterior deltoid. Do you remember what that did? Anterior deltoid? Flexion at the shoulder. Let me get rid of my pen here. There we go. So right next door to the anterior deltoid, we've got this portion of the pectoralis major, which is going to do flexion at the shoulder. So straight out to the front. Let me make that show that looks straight out to the front. Anterior deltoid and pectoralis major. Now, what else is this muscle going to do? Let me show you again. Here's the I. Here's the O. So we're going to move this towards this, the humerus towards the sternum. So once you have abducted using the deltoid, the pectoralis major is all stretched out and it's going to help you adduct and bring it back in. And then finally, this one's going to help with rotation. So is it going to be lateral rotation or is it going to be medial rotation? Well, if you remember, medial rotation is when the humerus rotates medially in towards your sternum. So it's going to be medial rotation. It's going to grab that intertubercular groove area over here and pull it towards the sternum. Okay, so that's medial rotation. And we're moving the humerus still at the glenohumeral joint. Number three. Huh. I put this picture in just so you could see this muscle because a lot of people have issues with this, um, like really understanding where it's attached. So this big guy, look how big this muscle is. It's going almost, I mean, it's going to overlap some with trapezius, which you've already learned. So it's in the thoracic section. It's in the whole lumbar section. We've got a ton of connective tissue down here, and our muscle's going to start all the way in this midline and then run, look where it goes, do 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 up to the humerus. The tricky part of this is that it's going to attach to the anterior humerus where the intertubercular groove is. So you got to keep that in mind. That's an important part. And then I also mentioned, look at this armpit. There's pectoralis major, which we just did. There's deltoid. And here's this other, these other muscles that are all up in this armpit area. So they've highlighted the muscle dark in dark red right here, the um, subscapularis. What we're looking at is right here. So it's actually going to come around the armpit and attach to the front side of the humerus. All right, you got to keep that in mind. That's important. All right, so here it is. 
showing you with trapezius, we've already learned we're looking at latissimus dorsi, which means broad on the back. Latissimus dorsi. So can you guess its actions? I like this picture because you can see the little dots there. It's going under the armpit from the medial side to the front of the humerus near the intertubercular groove. So how do we get the intertubercular groove closer to this massive origin that we have in the midline of the back? How do we do this? Well, we can do that in a couple of different, even a couple different ways. So, again, once we've abducted using the deltoid, the latissimus dorsi from the backside, which I can't reach, is gonna pull that humerus back in. So that's gonna do adduction. There's one. There's three of these. So adduction. Um, also, because the intertubercular groove is on the front, and we need to head towards the back where the origin is. That's going to pull the intertubercular groove towards the back. That's extension or really hyperextension. The third one is a little difficult to understand. So let me see if I can get my arm to show here. Um, it's coming from underneath your armpit, like mid back, up your side, under your armpit to the front. And so when it pulls, it's going to pull that intertubercular groove in the direction that it came from. So medially, I can't really do it medially. So this is an adductor, extender, medial rotator. This is a tricky one. You really have to pay attention to the fact that it's weaving like right by your armpit on the inside and so that humerus is going to twist towards your midline as it gets pulled from this direction. Let's see if I can kind of draw that in there. Like this. It's going to be pulled towards the midline, twisted towards the midline. All right, that's a very important point because a lot of people have trouble with that rotation. Okay, and I said that um, earlier, I don't know if you heard me, that the terrace major is like a little buddy of the latissimus dorsi. So let's take a look. On when I said little, I meant little. Teensy tiny. So here it is, posterior view. It's going to run from the inferior angle of the scapula over towards the humerus, again, under your armpit to the front. Here's an anterior view. We can see that it's attaching on the inferior angle, the posterior side of the inferior angle. Now you can see right there, there's the intertubercular groove area it's attaching to it. So we're looking from the front now. Rib cage is out of the way. So this one's called Terrace Major. There is a minor, it's coming up next. This one's going to help out the latissimus dorsi. And so notice it's attaching to the scapula, which is a little tricky because the scapula is a movable bone. And so when you move your arm all around, your scapula goes with it. So this is a helper. This is not a major mover. It's a helper for latissimus dorsi. So I want you to remember it does the same things. It helps with the extension adduction, bringing it in, and medial rotation. So if I put my eyes and nose in there, I'm hoping you can get this. Here's my origin. Here's my insertion. The adduction is right there in your arrow. Again, origins on the back, we can't really tell. Here's the insertion. If I'm trying to get this front towards the back, that's going to cause extension. And then the medial rotation, that humerus is going to twist towards your midline as it's getting pulled in that direction. Okay, so I want you to put these two together in a little relationship. Uh, latissimus dorsi plus teres major. Aw, true. This is what I used to do when I was a kid. True, true, love, always. <laughs> All right. I hope you enjoy that. Okay, now, there was, what did we just do? Four muscles. We got four left. 
So now we're going to be talking about the rotator cuff. Oops, where did I go? And here they are. Let's check it out. Okay, so we just did teres uh, major, and now we got teres minor. So this one's not nearly as complicated. Notice it's attaching right here to the scapula. What kind of, what border is this of the scapula? We got a border up here. Oh, we can't really see that one. We got a border here. That's the medial border. We got a border here. That's the lateral border. So it's going to run from the lateral border over to this lumpy bump right here, which is the greater tubercle. That's going to be an important spot for us. So let me put in, here's my origin. Here's my insertion on the greater tubercle of the humerus. Notice how it's kind of wrapped around, so it's going to give you one of these deals. Kind of a, uh, eh, that didn't turn out very good. Uh, sort of like, imagine this, it's going to rotate. It's going to rotate your humerus laterally, so it's going to twist that humerus towards the back. Lateral rotation. Can you get it? So terrace minor. Where was terrace major though? I can't, you know, we've lost track of this. So where is terrace major? I'll just kind of show you real quick. Terrace major went from the inferior angle of the scapula up here, kind of a little bit thicker. Ooh, this, this area, but then remember it went to the front. So it's going to be right next door. And then the latissimus dorsi is going to be all up in here, just underneath that. Okay. So we got terrace minor. There's one, three to go. Maybe. My computer is getting mad at me. Um, hello. Okay. And where am I? I am way past where I wanted to be. Holy moly. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Where's my toolbar? Okay. I got my stuff together. <laughs> my computer's fighting me today. So we just did Terrace Minor. Now, look at this. Let me go back. There's Terrace Minor. Watch. Vertigo. This is a totally different muscle. Terrace Minor was from the lateral border over to the greater tubercle. This guy is taking up this whole area here. So let me just point out, this right here is the spine of the scapula. And then it turns into the acromion process. So where is this muscle? It's below the spine. So we knew, we know a fossa called the infraspinous fossa that's right here. And this muscle is named for that. It's called the infraspinatus. Hmm, tricky. So here's a big old origin on the infraspinous fossa. There's the insertion point again. It's almost identical to the terrace minor. So what do we got? Lateral rotation. So here's another love story for you. Infraspinatus plus ter that's an I. Terrace minor. Aw. True love. Here you go. Forever. Yes. Okay, so those two work together. <coughs> Excuse me. Two more. Look! We just finished infraspinatus. This is not that tricky. Supraspinatus. And maybe you recognize this. This is one of the muscles that we did when we were learning about how muscles worked. So this one's going to run from the supraspinous fossa. That's the clavicle. There's the spine. It's in between. Supraspinous fossa. Over, 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 underneath the chromioclavicular joint to the head of the humerus. Bonk. There it is. Right on the greater tubercle. And so we're going to move this. I. Woo. To this. Oh. Wonk. 
Remember what our options were, folks. We had flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, medial or lateral rotation. Well, this is still part of the rotator cuff, but it doesn't rotate. Okay, figure that one out. This one does abduction. It doesn't, um, okay, it does abduction. It doesn't do, um, how can I say this? The deltoid helps. So your first like 10, somewhere between 10 and 20 degrees, supraspinatus is where it's at for the abduction. And then deltoid takes over when it lifts up higher. Um, so supraspinatus is actually not involved in the rotation, but it's part of the rotator cuff. So figure that one out. Well, really, um, that's called the rotator cuff and because most of them do rotation, but it creates a sort of tendinous cuff around the head of the humerus that holds it in place. So this one really is meant to prevent the humerus from moving around in like a superior or mostly inferior direction. We don't want the head of the humerus coming down like this. Okay, and the other ones are kind of holding it in place and then we're gonna have one on the front side, which we're gonna do next. So this one does abduction of the humerus at the, what's GH? Glenohumeral joint. Last one. Oh man, I didn't animate it. Dang it. Didn't even give you a chance to dang to think for yourself. Okay. Let's figure this one out. Subscapularis. It's in the subscapular fossa. We're on the anterior view of the scapula here. Everybody else was on the back. Now we're on the front. This one attaches to not the greater tubercle. What's this smaller bump on the other side of the groove? The lesser tubercle. And as you may imagine, this is going to hold part of the rotator cuff, it's going to hold the head of the humerus in place within the glenoid fossa, and it's going to cause medial rotation of the humerus at the glenohumeral joint. Fabulous. Okay, so I got a couple slides to review and then we're done. Hmm. Oh, before I do that actually, the rotator cuff, if you remember the four muscles, there is an, is that called an acronym? Well, anyway, it's these letters. Sits are the muscles of the rotator cuff. So the S is obviously doesn't matter which one you do first, but we've got supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. What's the other S? Ah, subscapularis. Supraspinatus infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. And actually, if you do su um, supra first, then they're in order. Supra is going to be the, the um, most superior one. Then on the other side of the spine is infra. Then if you're moving inferiorly, teres minor. And all three of these attach to the greater tubercle. Then you got the subscapularis over here, which attach is on the anterior, anterior side and attaches to the lesser tubercle. Okay, so there's how you can remember the muscles of the rotator cuff. Okay, on to our review. Okay, so what I want you to do is to identify these different muscles. I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of hard to see their numbers, but let me point to them. What muscle is this? Look at that. That's a big one. We learned that about um, muscles of the neck that move the head. And if we've watched, if you've watched the scapula movers, it's in there too. That's the trapezius. We know this one. We learned that one today. Did we? Yeah. Deltoid. That's a D. These we haven't learned yet. By the way, that's triceps. And then what do we got going on over here? Ooh, look at this big guy. That's latissimus dorsi. If that's latissimus dorsi, this one is teres major. I'm going to do T madge. This little dude right here, teeny tiny little speck of it, is teres minor. So right there, number, hmm, looks like a six. And then what's this one? Infra spinatus. But where is supraspinatus? Well, it's under. It's underneath here. And of course you're not going to see subscapularis because that's on the wrong side of the picture. All right, one more review page and we're done. Now we're looking at an anterior view. How do we know? Here's the rib cage. Here's the clavicle. 
here's the humerus. Busy, busy, busy. This is the, I'm guessing that's probably pectoralis major tendon that's been cut. Here's the biceps tendon. That's the short head. And then here's the other biceps tendon, which was going to come all the way over here. Nope, that's the long head. That's the short head. Anyway, let's get our bearings. Here's the scapula all the way around here. Humerus is buried underneath the muscles. So what do we got? Let me grab my pen. We're looking at an anterior view. Here's your subscapularis right here. What's this one up here? It's above the spine. Where's the spine though? We can't see it. It's on the back. So this is your supra. Supra. These green things are ligaments. Supra what? Supraspinatus. Okay, and what else we got going on here? Ooh, this is kind of a tricky one. I'm going to say that this one is probably teres. Let's see. Which one is it? It's coming from the inferior angle. Hmm. Or is it? Hmm, let's see. Wait a minute. This looks like it's going to the back. This looks like it's going to the front. I'm having trouble telling. I think it is. This is latissimus dorsi here. This is teres major. Where's teres minor? You kind of left it out. It should be right in this vicinity. And then infraspinatus would be near around the corner. Hmm. That's a tricky picture. Okay, so we got our four muscles of the rotator cuff. This sits, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres, minor, subscapularis. And we got our muscles, um, just regular muscles that move the humerus that are not part of the rotator cuff. Deltoid, pectoralis major, and then our lovely couple latissimus dorsi and teres major. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.